How's it going everybody? My name is Michael, also known as Drifty from Driftwood Gaming. In this video we're going to be playing The Guild 2 with Faye Jates Mega Mod Pack. This is an interesting game. They're working on The Guild 3 right now, but I would highly suggest you ch take a look at The Guild 2 and some of the mods before you look at The Guild 3, because The Guild 3 is kind of a mess right now. It's getting better, but it's just kind of messy. And now, The Guild 2 is super buggy. It's always been very buggy. These mods are supposed to fix a lot of the bugs. But basically, it's some sort of simulation game. And it's kind of an interesting game. So I'm just going to jump into a new game. We'll start with the Hansa. And I like to go with one or two years per round, and then council meetings every four years. So, hmm. If I do two years per round, we'll have council meetings every two years. So every other year, there's going to be uh, seat changes. So we're going to turn on less ambience and no random events because they're pretty much dumb. Um, we're just going to stay in dynasty mode, and I'm going to select six other dynasties. You know what? Let's make it interesting. Let's do ten other dynasties. Yeah. The white with the blue, blue cross, I guess. We'll start with that one. So here's our character creation, and you get to pick your first name, your last name. Your first name doesn't really matter too much, but your last name does because it's going to be your dynasty name. So the the more every time you marry, you, you know that that person is going to take the family name. If you have a kid, that person is going to take the family name. So kind of want to just pick your your last name. So for the classes, you have the patron, the craftsman, the scholar, and the rogue. Um, I think the rogue is probably the most interesting, but it's also hit or miss. You could you could really mess your game up real early if you if you don't start strong. Um, I like starting with scholar and then eventually getting a craftsman. Well, I guess we'll, we'll do that method. And uh, for Zodiac Sign, it, all of this just depends on what stat you want to have a bonus in. Now, all of these stats are different. Constitution is going to determine like how many uh, hit points you have and, and how long you live. It's a very important stat. And I'm not going to go through all of them right now. We'll go over the stats one at a time as, as they pop up. I'll take three Constitution, two Charisma, two Rhetoric, and two Arcane Knowledge, and one to the rest. And for the religion, there's only two religions. It'd be kind of cool if you could have more, but you have a uh, Catholic and Protestant, and you have to pick one. Um, I think most of the game, most of the the civilizations will kind of tend to go towards Protestant. So if you want to have the biggest uh, tithes, you get the most donations, you might want to select Protestant. So anyway, I'm just going to uh, select Protestant right here doesn't really matter too much but we're gonna hit continue and now we get to select you know the features on him what he looks like if he's a big fatty or if he's a super super skeleton you really don't get a lot of customization just kind of a minor stuff hairstyles and stuff and you get to select the voice we'll just take that one and of course the, the important beard you get to have. So we will go ahead and start like that. Go with the stash. And say start game. So there we go. So this is to have some fun. Blow off some steam from all the RPG Maker madness that's been going on. So, this is a fun game I play from time to time. I haven't played for a while. Um, it does crash all the time. So I do expect to jump and edit and cut this quite a bit. You can use WASD to move around and use the middle mouse to scroll in and out. Uh, and you can use the middle mouse to click and sort of look around the map if you hold that, which I thought was confusing at first, but it's really intuitive and simple once you just try it for an hour or whatever. And we're on the, the Hansa map and you can select different maps, but right here we start in this town, which isn't the biggest town of the, of the map. Um, so if you wanted to take over uh, politically, you probably want to move to the biggest town first so that you can try to upgrade this town to get it to be the kingdom, or what is it called? The capital. Because only one town in the city can be the capital, and you may spend all your time getting to the top of the politics chain inside a town that doesn't become the capital, and then uh, you have to migrate and start from the bottom and work your way up again. Uh, that's what I did in a previous game. but. Anyway, yeah, so let's look at our character real quick. We click on him up here. We can control three characters at the same time. 
press C, we can open up uh, our menu. You get experience for just about everything you do in the game, which is kind of awesome. Um, you also get perks and stuff as you level up. Your characters will level up over time, and uh, you'll get to... There's, there's constant progression, which is really awesome and something that's needed. You can double-click on your character, uh, and it'll take you to him. You can also press Control, just like any... Um, you know, like StarCraft, any kind of, of uh, strategy game, old school strategy game. Press Control and press 1 to 0, or actually 1 to 8, I think it cuts off only 8 hotkeys, to bind something to hotkeys. So say you have like 6 guys that are your guards, you can highlight them all, press Control and whatever number, and then whenever you press that number, it'll select all 6 of those guys again. So that's something that I learned over several hours of playing, which is a good tip to know right off the bat. So I guess in this uh, video, we'll talk about uh, some of the tips on playing the game, and definitely a fun game all right so we've got our character and we have to decide what are we gonna do with our 10 grand now we also want to climb the political ladder so we have to do things at the town hall so the first thing I'm gonna do with the town hall is I'm gonna see if I can purchase a title so I'm gonna unpause you it with wish a higher title of nobility to improve your standing am I right the new title costs but a small fee what do you say well, we've got 10k. We need to pay 2,500 to get the title, so we need this to to upgrade our status. So we're gonna pay money, and now go, just like buying the diploma. Like work. Same you will stuff. soon be notified. Same stuff. You're just paying. You're paying a school for a piece of paper. And you're paying the town hall for a piece of paper here. That's all you're doing. But anyway, we got our character. Now we have to decide uh, what are we going to do as our profession. Our profession. We need to figure out a way to make money, right? So we'll select our character, and we'll probably. It's a good idea to get married and have uh, a kid right at the beginning of the game because you can control three characters. So doing too much with one character at the beginning of the game, you're kind of selling yourself short. You'll make money faster, but in the long run, you would make more if you had two workers. So I think what we want to do is try to get uh, a spouse. So let's go ahead and before we do that, we will start a business though. So let's start a little business. Um, to do that, we're going to click on construct building. Now, since we're a scholar, it's put us on the scholar tab and we can start off with any of these uh, level one buildings and upgrade them as they go, level three, level five. In order to operate the buildings, you have to have that level. So my scholar is level one, so I can only operate a tentary or a church, a Protestant, a Catholic church, um, a pest house, a vault, a pawnbroker, you know. So I can't operate like a hospital yet, but that'll come in time. So the first thing I want to do is probably, probably open up a church, because what we're going to be doing in this game is taking over politically. So we need to have the people on our side to do that. So what we're going to be doing is opening up, uh, we selected, I think, Protestant. So we're going to select Protestant, and we're going to zoom out. And I'm also going to see if there's any other churches in town. Now, there is one here. There's already a Protestant church there. So I'm going to have competition, but at least, let's see, is there a Catholic church around? Because there's usually some competition. See, the problem with this, I'll, I'll convert Protestant, and, and then they'll also... I'll be helping my competition a little bit. But the same thing applies for me. So because we both selected Protestant, we're not going to be converting each other's members back and forth to Catholic, Protestant, Catholic, Protestant, and wasting time between. So overall, because I'm selecting the same as this, this town is going to grow faster than another town who's got opposing sides. So we're going to do that strategy. And I'll put this you want to put as many things that's going to make money towards the mark closer to the market as you can um, also around wells where you can harvest stuff in this mod that changed how you do harvesting it's a lot better and more it's just a lot better now uh, it's a lot harder but it's better so what I'm gonna do is I'll select the spot up here I like the spot right there so we've decided to put our church right there so I'll speed the game back up to normal so we paid $1,500 to get the foundation of our church set up so our guy's going to go over here and we're going to start building this over time. If you want to speed up the game, you can with the plus 
You can speed it up to fast forward, very fast or fast. You can also slow it down to slow, very slow, and completely pause. For the most part, I keep it on normal, but sometimes I will um, fast forward it just to like, okay, everything's in line. I just need this to happen. Fast forward, fast forward, fast forward, okay, pause, and then so forth. So I do that quite a bit. So right now we'll fast forward just till they get this done. Boom, shaka shaka. We got it done. We'll go back to normal. Matter of fact, we can pause it with space. Now we're going to select on our building and we want to hire some workers. So we're going to hire a random unemployed worker and we select, uh, you know, the level. All we can get is apprentice and they're going to ask us 240 plus 100 per, per day. Um, so we'll say, yeah, that's fine. Now we've got our uh, employees. We can also assign, it came with an employee, so I hired a second employee, plus you can work there yourself. So I'm going to select myself and, and my two employees Good. and we're going to make some hosts. Now these are like little basic crackers. So that when people come in, they buy these, these, they, you know, they pay a, a fee or toll, and they make a donation, and they get these hosts, they get these uh, crackers, these, these rations. So we're going to be making these and feeding the people with these. Now we're not going to be making these to sell them directly to the market because you won't make any money that way. But if you sell them during a sermon, uh, you know, in your uh, while you're doing the. You know, while you're if you sell them while you're somebody is, is throwing an event, then uh, you get more money donations. So that's what's going to happen there. So we're looking at the market here. You can buy and sell all kinds of different things at the market, but nothing will appear here until somebody has made it and put it there. So items don't just appear or disappear randomly on the market. It's items have to be sold by somebody to appear on the market and if somebody buys something on the market they will disappear off the market and the price will go up based on supply and demand. More often going to make money by uh, just operating businesses and crafting. You have your notifications on the left hand side here. You got dynasty mode. Um, and you'll get tips. You can left click on them to open them, right click to close them. If you don't even want to open them, you just right click the on it and it'll close it. wisdom knows no bounds has decided to award you a new title. So we got our title. We're a Yeo Min now. I think that lets us have two businesses. But we're not going to buy two businesses right now. We're just going to select on our business by double clicking here, our church. And uh, we've got our guys making stuff. And while we're making stuff, our character is getting experience. You can see we've gotten 460 experience. If, you, if your last character dies in your dynasty, it's game over. So as soon as we get this business a little established, we're going to look for a wife. So what we can do is double click here and we'll go inside. So you can go inside your buildings too, which is really neat. They're not super huge, but they do have a lot of detail in them. Just something that Guild 3 is missing, all of the, the detail and stuff. So inside uh, your businesses, you get special options if you have the ability to operate the business. And as a scholar, we're able to operate the, the level one church. Um, so we can make a donation and that'll give us favor with people. We can give a sermon, which can also get us donations. We can sell hosts and we can also convert people and whatnot. Uh, goad workers, that will make people work harder, work faster, but they'll hate you eventually for it. So you can only do it sporadically, or sparingly. Um, you can give a pay bonus, which is the same thing, except they'll love you and you lose money. Uh, you get more productivity, but you have to pay for it. And then of course you can leave the building. What we're going to do is we're going to click give a sermon. And that's going to basically start the process of like some sort of, your character goes into auto run. He does his thing. Now you can control him. And if you, if you move him even the slightest, he'll stop and you, it's, it's time, it's on a timer. So you click give the sermon, you have to wait a certain number of uh, time. I think it's like uh, eight hours in game. And I believe it's one minute per hour in game, like one real minute is an hour in game, but you can fast forward, right? And you can slow down and you can pause, so you can manipulate that. And you see a little bar underneath it, uh, the character. That's your progress bar. So I'm gonna be giving this sermon until this completely fills up all the way. But what you can also do while you're giving a sermon is you can uh, libel someone or you can praise someone. So you can talk down on your opposing po uh, politicians or 
you can uh, praise the people you're trying to suck up to to get their favor so that they will vote you into office. It's a very, very fun game. It's very, very fun. Um, but it's very challenging with these mods too because it makes it... Without the mods, it's easy to just win monetarily and then you buy every... You bribe, bribe, buy Money, money, money. It's so easy to be about the money. But this game makes it really hard. So the mod makes it really hard so that it's kind of hard to get that money to bribe. So you kind of have to go every other possible means you can of political power. Sometimes you have to jail somebody, uh, you know what I mean? Like, just so that they can't be there to vote against you. Or like, you know, it's really, really, uh, it reflects real life, you know. Like, kind of makes me think about what's going on right now. You know. Is it bugged out again? Yeah, the game bugged out. Sometimes you just have to save the game and then load the game. And sometimes you have to close the program and open the program. So what I'm going to do is let my, uh, my sermon finish and save and load. Because I'm unable to open my menu. YouTube vid. It also auto saves quite frequently. Let's go ahead and add one to our rhetoric and take our level two ability. So we can select several different things, but what I want as much education as I can get because this will let me put more stats. So I'm gonna select educated for this one to just give me as much experience as fast as possible. So 5% bonus. So that's what we took for our level two. Yes. We reached level two. Now we need to find uh, a wife. We've got a business. We've got a couple employees. We've got a title of Yeoman. So what we're going to do is important units. A button up here called important units. And it lets you see important units. So what we're going to look for is the best candidates. Uh, and what I want is a craftsman. We've got rogues, rogues, rogues. Here's a craftsman, a 21-year-old craftsman. Veronica Borkner, uh, another one, Suzanne Neeser, here's a patron and a scholar. So I want to have a 20, let's see, yeah, definitely a craftsman because a scholar and a craftsman work very well together. Craftsman can uh, operate a mine and get gold, and then the gold can be used in a, through the scholar's businesses to make lots of money. Um, even more so without the mods, but with the mods, it's still you can still do it. Um, let's go ahead and, and just whatever one, it doesn't matter. Veronica, she has unknown, unknown, but her family is sought after. So that's another thing to think about is uh, reputation. So this person's guild reputation and imperial fame, they are respected. Their family is respected. Nobody knows who she is, but their family is respected. Now, this person's they are, their, her family is sought after, which is even above that. So we're gonna actually go after her. But she's got a cold, she doesn't have a cold. That's temporary, I think it won't matter too much. We're going to, oh, she's already courting someone, literally, son of a gun, whatever. Um, let's go ahead and press control one. Now I've locked her, so if I press one, I can see where she's at. Now I select my guy, go to her. And if I press one twice, I can, you know, like, see where she's at. So she's going to market, buying some bread or something. Talk to her. Where'd she go? Oh, she's in a house I can't see. What time is it? It's 21.30. She probably went in the house to go to bed. Darn it. Oh, no, she's there. She is. Okay. Oh, there she is. Uh, what's her name again? Uh... Okay, let's talk to her. I want to talk to you. Hey, hey. Veronica Borkner. Hey, what's up? How are you doing? Yeah. You can force someone into marriage, but you have to pay quite a bit. And they don't like you as much. It's probably better if you have the money to do that. It's faster. But at the beginning of a game, it's a little bit hard to... Do a title and a business and, you know, for, it's kind of like, kind of have to work for something. So let's see if she wants to court. Hey, 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 what's up, Veronica? You we talked? Delicta. Are you into it? Did you just run to your house to hide? Mother of... 
There she is. Hey, 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 hey. Do you want a court? You are an attractive you woman. You are an attractive woman. They have all these uh, banter lines back and forth, which is kind of cool. Yes. The voice acting in this is pretty good. The voice acting in 3 is... A courtship has begun. What are they even doing in the Guild 3? Like, I want the Guild 3 to be good so bad, but it just looks like a mess. So, she has decided to um, accept my offer, and now we are courting. So, the fact that we are courting gives me the ability to tell her to follow me. Which is kind of interesting, because you can actually keep her from going to bed. You can keep her from doing anything. For a while, for a long while, even if you don't marry them, you can have them following you around, but you have to periodically tell them, follow me, follow me, follow me. So this plays out uh, in your favor quite a bit, because what you need to do is compliment them, and then, and then like embrace them, and then talk to them, and then beguile them. You don't want to use the same thing over and over. They'll pick up on it, and they'll, they won't have much of a positive favor for it. Um, the same thing is if you like try to embrace them or kiss them too much, at first they'll like it. You'll get good good bonuses. But if you try to do it too much, you'll get uh, you'll lose score with them. So every time you interact with your uh, spouse, you have to tell them, "Follow me." Otherwise, they'll just walk off and do their own thing. And most of the time, they'll never come to you for some reason until you tell them. But they'll continually say, uh, "Your spouse feels neglected." If you know, like. It, you basically gotta one-side it and, until it happens. So, you have a timer when you... Uh, I just complimented her or something. I think I complimented Yeah. I complimented her, so you have to wait two hours before you can do it again. So, you tell them to follow you, you wait for your timer to go down, and then you compliment them, and then you tell them to follow you, and you go about your business. Now, I can go back to my uh, the church here, but I can't really like do a sermon or something, because... She'll eventually walk off. But if you tell her to follow you, she will for a while. Long enough for you to maybe craft something. Or get some experience crafting. Every day you have to pay taxes based on how many employees you have. Uh, and every day is like a year. Um, and the more businesses and employees you have, the more your overhead becomes. And the more you have to make to sustain. And, and pretty much simple economy but now you notice outside this church a year has passed two years have passed we're no longer the new thing we've been around for a while there's some people who will say attend church they will go in front of your church and they will wait for you to open to see if they can um, you know attend or whatever but you also have people who fake it who go in front of your door they act like they want to attend church, and as soon as you hold the sermon, they walk off. Those are your competitors. So the game is very dynamic like that. So you have to pay attention to the time and know what time your competitors are going to try to trick you into thinking there's people who want to donate and, and watch a sermon. So uh, you'll, you'll also notice the characters. You can kind of see the ones that are uh, the disposition, if they're like wicked they'll try to keep tricking you. But if they're righteous, they probably just want to have a sermon there. Unless they're a competitor, you know, like a uh, different religion or whatever. But it's very fascinating. It's interesting, this whole game and what you can actually do in it. So let's see, has our timer gone away? We still have 25 uh, seconds, 25 minutes or whatever. So let's fast forward this just a little bit because I want to hit her with another, with a big kiss. We're gonna give her a big kiss. Because we compliment her, so now we'll we'll go the other route. Now we say that. La 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 la. Our charisma is not very I high, so it may be like, oh, get away, you you buffoon. We'll see. And it's a, always uh, an awkward animation. And it's great. I love you it. Kiss very well. But she bought it. She liked it. She's into it. It's good stuff. Good stuff. We have to pause it right after any interaction to tell her, hey, don't go away. Follow me. Come along, please. Come come, come along. Come along, please. Follow me. Follow me. Awesome. So now we wait for that to happen, uh, the, the timers to go down again. But what we can do while we're waiting 
is open up our production storeroom and select something to do. Now normally we would, I would make hosts, but I don't have uh, the wheat or the holy water to do so. Select the hand cart that I have and tell the hand cart to go to the market. So it's just going to pick up some supplies. So my hand cart's going to make its... Where's my, my business? It's right here. So the hand cart is going to make its way down to this little place. And when it gets here, you'll, we'll see it show up in this transport menu. There it is, so it can hold some stuff. We're going to go ahead and buy some wheat. Anyway, I'm going to buy as much as I can get, 40 of it. Uh, full load, it costs 2,000 gold for that much wheat. But what we're going to do is take it back. We're going to unload it. Return. So basically, go unload the wheat and come back, is what I told it. You can make uh, patterns, uh, macros and stuff and trading routes and have your, all of your merchants constantly buying and selling. Constantly buying and selling. So you can basically <laughs> micro, cut down the micromanagement and uh, turn it into macro management. Your smile is dangerous. I don't know how I could resist it. Thank you for your kind and gentle words, sir. Awesome. Getting more favor with her, we're going to tell her to, hey, follow me. And you can see her progress bar. So this is her general favor, the first blue bar. The green one's her health, is HP. Um, but then you have the third one, which is your uh, courtship progress, you know, your marriage progress. So when that fills up, you can propose and they'll say yes, or you'll have the option to anyway. You could always force them into marrying you, um, but that costs money. Um, and it's just not the best approach unless you're in a hurry and have a lot of money. You can also do uh, evil things like break people's bones, rob them, threatening, threaten them, bribe them, blackmail them, and kill them. You can finish them off. So this game lets you do a lot. So the game is really good. I mean, it's really good. It has a, a lot of flexibility with what it lets you do. It's been expanded on so many times. We're going to fast forward a little bit. I want to do this whole marriage process, and we'll do that for, uh, I think, a good starting episode for Edmund Dantes uh, in the guild, too. So here we go. We're going to try to beguile her. We are going to beguile. That was an interesting conversation. You can right click this to get through it. So that was a big bonus. She jumped 26 points. It's like a double. We did something really well right there. So I think what we can do here very quickly, or I mean, very shortly, we're going to be able to propose. I think one more time, all I got to do is like compliment her or something, and then we are, we are good to go. So let's fast forward. There it is, okay, and now we're just going to give her a compliment, and she should just be like, dangerous. drop dead in love with us, and we should be able to get married. Thank you. Thank you. Someone has fallen in love with you. Someone has fallen in love with me. Now we can ask for a hand. Variatio delectat. And there's the, the sequence for everything, like little cutscenes, the voice acting. Children? It's, it's really a magnificent game, for you, and I played it for for several hours throughout Most gladly, the last sir. year, in 2017. So now we got to decide how we're going to get married. We can get married right here, right now, or we can go into a monastery chapel, and that gives us a little bit of a, I think, some bonus. I'm going to pay the 900 to do uh, the wedding, just because I think it gives some uh, uh, political bonus. I'm not sure. But it's not a lot of money, relatively, 900. It is at the beginning of the game, but it's not. It seems like it might be worth getting the extra point in whatever it will give us for the 900 gold. I could go buy wheat and spend 2,000 gold, you know, so. We'll just fast forward this. We're just walking to the monastery. Derp -de -derp -de -derp. Walking through town. So there we go, we're in town, double click that, we're in the monastery, and here I come a-walking up. Is she here? She's already here. How did she get here so fast? I don't know. 
you know, she likes to moonwalk. She also just glides across. And we can move the camera around in here if we want with WASD and middle mouse. We gather together today to join these two people in the bond of holy matrimony. And you, do you wish to take this woman to be your lovely wedding wife? To love and love till death do you part? If so, answer with yes. Yes. Yes, I do. And you, do you wish to take this man to be your lawfully wedded husband? To love and honour till death do you part? If so, answer with yes. Hell no! <sighs> yes, I do. I hereby declare you man and wife. You may now kiss the Lord. And the awkward quiz, the awkward kiss. <laughs> I love it. The council has started to summon his troops. Oh, there's going to be a war. If I join the war, I can get a lot of money if I don't die. You know what? It's probably worth trying to join the war. Okay, so we got a business, we got married, we got a title, um, we got some people coming to our business, our church, and uh, it's starting to look like a game. A war is happening, and we are going to participate in the war next time. So thank you guys so much for watching The Guild 2 with me, Michael, also known as Drift, you can drift with gaming. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Hopefully you guys like this. If not... I do. Bye.